So Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world, present, not future. That's who the disciples are. That's who we are as his people. Well, as your new pastor, my family and I naturally have moved into a new place. This is a new place to us. And I need to tell you all one thing that I'm actually particularly proud of this morning, and it is this, that I no longer need a GPS to find my way around. <laughs> Seriously. I don't need a GPS to find my way to Hawk Ridge, which I did quite, uh, quite, I was gripping my phone quite heavily whenever I was looking for it the first time, trying to figure out where Target was and where Panera, oh, not Panera, the St. Louis Bread Company here, right? North Carolina, it's Panera, it's different. Um, but, but it was hard to find my way around. And now I can find my way all the way to Wentzville Parkway on my very own. <laughs> Seriously. No Google search, no phone in hand, no nothing. But that's not how things were when we first arrived here. They weren't. I, we couldn't tell you where Highway N and Highway Z went. We didn't know where they led. And have you ever felt this feeling when you've been into a new place, maybe you've moved into a new place or, or visiting friends in a different area that you are not familiar with? You ever had that feeling that you just didn't know where to go? You didn't know uh, many of the people in town. You didn't see many familiar, familiar faces. Well, what I had found, especially in moving here to this new community, is that is that it was very helpful to begin to know where to go, to become familiar with this area whenever a central point or a center point was grounded for us that we knew where it was. And for us, it was this church building. We knew that this church building was on Highway N. And so from here, we began to make our way to different areas of this community, always keeping in mind and always remembering this center point, this central location, this church building. Why do I tell you that? I tell you that because Jesus in his word is beginning to push the disciples toward a place here in Matthew 5 of seeing him as the center point for their lives as they begin to traverse and move their way through the community as his faithful followers. Jesus has just called the disciples to follow him. And here in Matthew chapter 5, we find that Jesus begins to move the disciples into a new place. A new place of faith in him and trust in him as the center point of their lives. And it's a new place that causes these disciples to wrestle with his word. Now, now do something for me. Try your very hardest. Remember all the way back to last week, seven days ago, to the, to the gospel lesson that was read then, the words of Jesus. Can you do that all the way back then? I'll remind you if not. He said, blessed nine different times. Blessed are, Jesus said. Blessed are, blessed are. And kept going through a list of the people who God was blessing through Jesus here in this moment. The problem is, and the challenge is to the, to the disciples, that Jesus is not blessing people that should be by the standards of society. Blessed are the poor in spirit, those spiritually bankrupt. Blessed are those who have this insatiable desire of spiritual contentment. Blessed are those people? You've got to be kidding me. What about the rich, the wealthy, those of, of high influence? Jesus doesn't say anything about them here. But poor in spirit, hunger and thirst for righteousness, the meek, the peacemakers. And here in Matthew chapter 5, especially verse 13... As Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world, Jesus is moving these disciples one step further in faith. You are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. That actually seems like a pretty ill-conceived claim by Jesus upon the disciples. Why? Because the disciples haven't done anything yet. They haven't done anything yet. Sure, Jesus has called them to follow him, and they have, but... But these disciples aren't speaking as eloquently as Jesus is. These disciples aren't healing like Jesus is, that's for sure. They're watching him do it, but they're not doing it. These disciples aren't walking on water or, or feeding 5,000. These disciples are just tagging along. And yet still Jesus says to them, You are the salt of the earth. And you are the light of the world, present here, now. 
I mean, shouldn't Jesus at least have something in the disciples' lives to point to as the reason why this identity is being placed upon them by him? Or at the very least, shouldn't Jesus at least include a how-to of, of how the disciples can really live up to this title in the world among all other people, salt to the earth, the light of the world? Sometimes this is our hesitation, though. Because these words are also placed upon us as his people gathered here, that you are the salt of the earth now, today, here. And you are the light of the world now, today, here, not future, but present. But how do we do that, right? Where's our step-by-step, word-for-word owner's manual with this title? What do we say? Where do we go? And, and, and to whom? And the questions, they can begin to, to pile up also in our lives. You know, it's not so much that we think Jesus is lying when, we say the, when he says these words to us. It's just that we'd, we'd like more details. And these questions, they, they, they come and they rattle in our brains and in our hearts. And, and how can we have, have as much influence as this world as, as the other people around us who we feel are much more spiritually in tune with Jesus than we are? What can we possibly do? And by our words and our actions, what influence can we possibly make in a big world with big problems? It doesn't take much from Satan, the great deceiver, to, to subtly push us in insecurity. Especially when we, these thoughts and these, and these questions are, are rattling around in our minds. Pushing us in direction away from seeing God as our Savior anchored in our midst and more toward our deep longing and insatiable desire to do something absolutely incredible like Mary thought she had to do whenever the angel came to her and said she was found in favor by God and would have a child. Or we feel that, that we need to speak articulately and, and and eloquently and, and perfectly with a clear and concise message like Moses thought whenever God came to him and asked him to lead the people out of Egypt. You are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. And so many questions in our mind can be brought up when we hear those things. Moved into this new place, what's been really fun for me is to hear your stories. The stories that you've shared with me about about living here much longer than this actual church building facility has been here in this place. And, and the previous facility, you were a part of that congregation. I've heard stories of where some of you used to live on farms that are now neighborhoods. I've heard stories of how you used to pass by Wentzville Bluffs and there was no Wentzville Bluffs. It was all trees and now it's not. And it's been fun to hear the many different things that you have seen take place in this community, not only of Emanuel Lutheran Church and School, but also in Wentzville. But what I've began to, to hear from many of you, especially in the changes that you've seen take place, is that we're not where we used to be today. Things have changed, haven't they? Things are different than they were 50 years ago, of course. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, even five years ago. There's a lot that has changed in this community, in this church, in our very lives. And that can be hard. That can be difficult to take, this change that's happening around us, especially when we have so much of ourselves invested in what's happening around us, but also what's happened in our past. Friends that we've had that have either passed away or moved away, Fields that we used to look upon and find delight, and now they're houses. Jobs that we once flourished within, and now things are different. That change can be tough. It can be tough to live through. But God hasn't forgotten us. No, no, God hasn't forgotten us. In fact, he has a keen eye on our lives. He has a keen eye here in Jesus on the disciples too because Jesus knows that changes are certain to take place in their lives from Matthew 5 and on. Changes to take place in, in what they do and what they say and where they go and who they interact with. Changes that will cause these disciples to actually begin to consider, was it worth it to follow him? Was it worth it? 
changes in their lives that have them weigh themselves and what they've done and, and what they can say and who they are and, and if they can truly live up to what Jesus says that they are, the salt of the earth and light of the world. Changes in their lives that will cause other people to talk behind their back and things that they say or don't say in Jesus' name. Changes in the lives of the disciples that will have them angry and frustrated at one another. These changes are certainly going to take place in their lives, but, but amid these changes, Jesus does not want them to forget the unchangeable Savior in their midst. Though this earth may give way, Christ remains. And he, he anchors himself as the center point for their very lives here as they're called to take his love, to take his care and compassion back into this world. You are the salt of the earth, and you are the light of the world. Therefore, let your light shine before others, that they might see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus calls these people who haven't done anything yet to be his messengers of love in the world. And his choosing of them is not because of the great things that they've done or the wonderful things that they've said or the vast crowds that they've influenced. But he's chosen them solely through the actions that he has done for them in coming to them and drawing near to them and soon in dying for them upon the cross. You know, thanks be to God, we are not where we used to be. You see, once we were blind to the love of God, but now we see it in Jesus. Thank God that we, as the people gathered here, are not where we used to be. Once we were lost in our sin and temptation, and now we've been found in the grace and encompassing forgiveness of our Savior, Jesus Christ. No, we're not where we used to be. And thanks be to God that it is so in our lives through Jesus and what he's done in us. This forgiveness that he's given us, it clothes us like the very clothes on our bodies as we enter this world today. Moving us through the, those uneasy questions or feelings that we have of exactly how to go about being the light of the world or the salt of the earth. He moves us into a new place to have our eyes rest upon him as our center point our frame of reference for life as we begin to make our way through this world as travelers following him. As people with love written on our hands and on our hearts, we go keeping him in mind as our anchor. Today we're invited back here to this place, the Holy Spirit does, to become reacquainted with the forgiveness that he's given to us, to hear once more the words that God has spoken out to us that he meant every single one in our baptisms when he said, I know you by name and you are mine. These words upon you, I know you by name, and you are mine. You see, Jesus' forgiveness is what makes us worthy to receive that call that you are the salt of the earth, and you are the light of the world. And from here, from here we go out. We go out into this world, and we have nothing to fear because Christ knows us intimately. He knows us better than we know ourselves. We go back to our neighborhoods. And we go through the streets of this community, whether you need a GPS or not. And we find ourselves around the hallways of schools throughout this community and in lunchrooms, in waiting rooms all throughout town, in people's homes or on different athletic fields, wherever we go, as we declare the love of Jesus as the light of the world. And we are as the salt of the earth. And we do these things by forging conversations and getting to know people's names, listening to them not in order to respond, but listening to them in order to understand, to get to know people. We have the opportunity then, uniquely to each of us, to give of ourselves whenever opportunities arise, when we see need, just as we heard in Isaiah chapter 58. And we also have opportunities whenever people ask us why we do what we do in the name of Jesus that looks different than other people. We can be honest and bold knowing that the Holy Spirit is capable of using our words and our actions for the glory of God. That is our privilege as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So I'd like to close with this. Where are you going from here today after coffee or whatever brunch, whatever's next? Where are you going Get in mind where you're going. Think through 
Maybe imagine those places that you're going to. Maybe it's your home. Maybe it's back to school later this week. Maybe you've got athletic practice this afternoon or, or somewhere else to go. And, and, and who are, who's gathered in those places for you? Who's gathered around you in those places, in your home, in your neighborhood, at school, or beyond? Because these are the very places and the very people that gather within that Christ calls us to love and to serve and to have compassion for and to be among as his people. You are the salt of the earth. You are right now. And you as God's people are the light of the world. And Jesus Jesus hasn't called you because you've proven yourself to be absolutely wonderful, head and shoulders above other people. He's chosen you and he's called you because the Holy Spirit has moved you into a new place that in all things in life, you'll lean on him. You'll trust in Christ as our anchor here today and wherever we go from here. And with this compassion and God's forgiveness written on our lives, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Thank you.